Hey, Shalom Mom, Kim, Shalom Mom. First thing and foremost, I'd like to give all praises and glory and honor that is due to you. How about Shimi, how is Shai, about Shimon I'd like to give double honors unto the apostles and elders of the great millstone. Blessings and salutations to the whole elect. Noise in this gospel, brother, from the standard of how about Shimi, how is Shai, wherever it may be. Uh, this is just a quick lesson to the spirit about the diesel shortage. And um, I got first hand of that because um, I want to say last week, I think it was like last Thursday, if I'm not mistaken, or something like that. Um, at the end of the day, I was at work. We went to fill up the trucks, and uh, there was no more fuel. Okay, and I think the whole gas station ran out of fuel for the most part, but mainly the diesel pumps. They put the plastic bags on them because uh, they said they wasn't working. So basically, they ran out. Okay, and um, I believe through the spirit, the Most High is getting ready to really collapse this place, man. Because with the fuel now, with the shortages and so, <coughs> it's like you. damn. <coughs> With the fuel shortages and so forth, um, I believe they can only utilize so much a day before they completely run out. So they don't have an unlimited supply. Like a lot of times you see the trucks, they pulling up to the docks and they're, you know, uh, uh, filling the stations back up with gas. Like a lot of times you see those tanker trucks, what they're doing is they're filling up. So therefore, uh, they hook up into like this underground system and they put this like this little vac thing and they pretty much suck it into the, the tubes on the ground. And that's how you fill your pumps. But um, nonetheless, man, hey, those trucks are very far and few in between because it says here the U.S. diesel shortage is worsening. And diesel is the bloodline of America, man. OK, that's the ultimate bloodline of Babylon the Great, because once diesel goes, that's it. OK, the trucking companies, construction, that's it's a done deal. All the materials, because all these things are done by truck, man, mainly truck and train. But hey, once diesel completely goes out. Shit, you could forget about anybody uh, that, that got CDLs or jobs and stuff like that that caused them to drop. You could forget about that industry, man. Okay, and that's going to be one of the major blows to Babylon the Great because that's a very important field. Trucking is very important and it's very uh, sacred into the economic infrastructure of the United States. So it says a multi-year low, low inventories and constraints and supplies are ex exacerbating a diesel shortage in the United States especially on the east coast man and that's very very lucrative on the east coast because hey you know you got new york okay you got maryland you got shit fucking pennsylvania okay you got a lot of these particular coastal cities okay that deal with like a lot of trucking and mackerel and so forth and shit man on the east coast that's 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 a, a definitely a, a blow to the to the rest of the country because if new york goes under then i mean that's pretty much it because they follow suit so to speak but it says diesel demand continues to be strong after recovering faster from the pandemic slump than other fuels such as gasoline reliance refiners say. It says, but several factors have combined this to deplete U.S. distillate inventories, which includes diesel and heating oil. It says and ahead of the winter, the distillate fuel crunch is worsening. So this is the Lord, man. He's bringing a lot of judgment, man. OK, and we're getting ready to see record. We can a. Hey, this economy is getting ready to slow down greatly, you know, so if this keeps up hey, by the end of the year, shit, I may be out of a fucking job. <laughs> but, you know, who cares? I mean, you how about you, how should I take care of us? And there's other things to do for work. You know what I'm saying? And the Lord is going to take care of us. But regardless of that, man, this place is shutting down and we're, we're witnessing it. But it says U.S. refining capacity is now lower than this before COVID as operable refinery capacity shrank in 2021 for a second consecutive year to stand at the 17.9 million barrels per calendar as of January 1st, 2022. It says U.S. refiners permanently shut down some refinery capacity at the start of the you-know-what when fuel demands plunge, while others close facilities to convert them into biofuel refineries. Oh, shit. But it says some refineries were under maintenance this autumn, reducing the availability of products in addition to U.S. banned imports of all Russian energy products after the Russian invasion of the Ukraine, it hasn't imported any petroleum products uh, from Russia since April. And another thing, too, that's going to hurt them is that Saudi Arabia is basically uh, trying to join BRICS. OK, because I believe BRICS nation that goes into Brazil, Russia, uh, India, China and South Africa. Those are your BRICS nations. And I believe Saudi Arabia is on the cusp of joining, if I'm not mistaken, the OPEC nations and so forth. Because, hey, man, if they join that and if they end up teaming up with the BRICS nations, then you can kiss this country goodbye. Because now they're going to have to pay more for oil to be imported in the United States, man. Which you Americans, you, it's, it's, 
Esau is a fucking, he's a dumbass, man. He's stupid. You know, you cutting off, your, your allies are cutting you off now. <laughs> it's all working against you, bro. So, hey, man, this is, this is getting ready to get good. It says, uh, it says low refinery capacity in the U.S. since the pandemic seasonal maintenance uh, refineries globally in the major strike in France have all combined in recent weeks to create a shortage of middle distillates. Not only in the United States, but also worldwide. It says the world is also scrambling for diesel supply. Also, in the view of looming EU embargo on Russian fuel imports by sea, expected a kick in early February. But it says uh, a diesel shortage and the high diesel prices don't bode well for the global economy, which is slowing down and can tip into recession at some point next year. We're already in a recession. What are you talking about? But it says distillate fuels. Fuels are used in transportation, agriculture in manufacturing and heating. But in the US, distillate uh, fuel inventories are about 20% below the five-year average for this time of the year, according to the EA, EIA's latest inventory report. So it says the US have just 25 days of diesel supply in reserve. Oh shit, with some regional markets very tight. <laughs> but according to the US diesel reserves, the end of October have never been so low since 1951. But note that refiners aren't trying Refinery utilization on the East Coast was 102.5% in the week of October 1st, but yet distillate inventories are much lower than normal and diesel and heating oil prices remain high and stoke inflation as they make consumer goods and heating bills more expensive. And that's that's true because honestly speaking, my bill came out, man. That motherfucker was a damn 100 bucks. And I was like, wait a minute, this must be two bills. Because I'm like, I ain't really been home. I've been at work, so I don't have the heat on when I'm gone. I don't, I don't have no type of appliance on anything. I'm like, how the fuck is the bill so high? But this is one of the reasons. Inflation, you know? So, it is getting ready to get, it's the, 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 the fucking crunch is getting ready to get, get pretty tight, man. So, us as brothers, man, we gonna have to really put our best heads together and we gonna have to figure things out through the spirit. But for the rest of you people, you people are through, man. Okay, you think your jobs and your careers and you making your so-called power moves is gonna <laughs> is gonna get you out of a tough situation. To so you people gonna get caught off guard out there, man. Like the scriptures say, nobody should save themselves in the iniquity of his life. Okay, so uh, let's go here to to to, to the uh, scriptures here. This is Second Andrews nine, and I'm gonna start at one. It says, and he said, answer me then. It said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. Okay, and when thou seest part of the signs past, which I've told thee before, then thou shalt understand. That this is the very same time when the highest would begin to visit the world which he made, okay? And this is how Bashim how was shy visiting this place, man. Cause like I said, 25 days of deep, uh, uh 25 days of left in a in a in a in a, in a uh, what you reserves. Hey man, it's not looking good, you know. But we'll see what happens, man. Because you know, Esau, he likes to try to pull a rabbit out of his ass, but you know, we'll see. But regardless, man, it's not gonna be good for uh construction workers, truckers, and so forth like that, you know. But it says, therefore, when there should be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then thou shalt well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the beginning that were before thee, even from the beginning. OK, because the prophets of old seen these things in visions, man, and they spoke about them ultimately. OK, and it says, here for us, like all that is made in the world, at the beginning and the end, the end is made manifest. It says the end. It says that the end is manifest. Even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and works and powerful works ending in effects and signs, man, okay? And this is part of it. This is part of that hump that you people are getting ready to crash, man, okay? Because, like I said in a previous video, once everything shuts back down, it's, it's, it's a wrap, man. It's not going to survive it, you know? So this is the book of Second Edges 6 and 22. It says, and suddenly should the sown places appear unsown, and the full storehouses should be suddenly found empty. That's your stores, your malls. You know, like um, majority of the malls in America, they're closing. Like we've been under what they call the retail apocalypse since 2017. You know, so economic growth has been slowing down in the last six, seven years. But now since the pandemic, everything has just accelerated. All right. And it says, and the trumpet should give a sound. And what's that trumpet? The impending danger. Okay. And when every man hear it, they should suddenly be afraid. Because, hey, we're beating the, uh, the, the we're blowing the trumpet. We're telling people, hey. Get in, get in line, get in order, get in order. Okay, all hell getting ready to break loose. Get your life right. We how about how shy? Come into the knowledge of knowing you in Israelite according to the Bible. Stop calling yourself black, you know, etc. 
but you know, Jake, they're rebellious. So, and it says, and at that time shall friends fight one against another like enemies, and the earth shall stand in fear of those that dwell therein, and the springs of the fountain shall stand still, and in three hours they should not run, right? Because your water supply systems are going to shut down, okay? Your sanitation systems, you ain't going to have anybody at those uh, pump stations at the water department pumping the sewage out of the water, recycling it, and, and recirculating it back through the drains and so forth. This place is going to be a total shutdown, man, you know, and it's coming soon, and you can feel it through the spirit. That Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is getting ready to really do something bad to this place. And finally, man, because honestly speaking, this place is this place is, is vexing as hell. Okay. So it says here, the East Coast fuel markets are facing diesel supply constraints due to market economics and tight inventories. But because conditions are rapidly devolving and market economics are changing significantly each day, Mansfield is moving to alert level four to address market volatility. It says Mansfield is also moving to southeast to code red, requesting 72-hour notice for deliveries when possible to ensure fuel and freight can be secured at economic levels. But the Biden administration hasn't ruled out the idea of limiting U.S. fuel exports in order to restore inventories and lower prices. <laughs> but refineries are opposed to the idea, saying that banning or limiting the export of refinery products will likely decrease inventory levels, reduce domestic refinery ca uh, capacity, and put upward pressure on consumer fuel prices and alienate U.S. allies during a time of war. All right. And it says it looked like a big, ugly wolf is a cold winter. So they talking about a real cold winter, man. You know, so the Lord is not playing games, man. You know, most high sick of this place and he's getting ready to throw it down. Finally, um, brothers, we're going to be here to watch the grand finale. We're going to witness the, the death of a nation, man. OK. And the people that surround this place, they're going right down with this place, man. And you can't have any remorse for them because hey, they didn't care about Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You know, we was a bunch of niggas, remember? Bigots. You know, a bunch of crazy people. We in a cult. That's what they've been saying about us. But when they see that these words that we speak and that the Lord is dealing with us, oh, that they gon that energy gon that energy gonna change real, real soon. Okay? So this is the book of us, second chapter sixteen. And I'm going to start at verses uh, 17. It says, woe is me, woe is me, who would deliver me in those days, okay? It says, the beginning of sorrows and great mornings, and the beginning of famine and great death, great death, beginning of wars, and the power shall stand in fear, and the beginning of evils. But what shall I do when these evils come, okay? And this is a man of the Lord saying these things, okay? It says, behold, famine, plague, and tribulation, which this is part of the tribulation that's coming, and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment." But for all these things, they should not turn from their wickedness, nor always be mindful for their scourges. Because like I said, old girl that got her house burned down last week, you think she asked the most high, what did she do wrong? Of course not. You know, she's basically playing the victim. Oh, why me? No, man, you got to ask yourself, what did you do wrong? You know, and you're not in the truth. So clearly you was in error. You know, like when we get go through things, man, like when my car burnt up, first thing I asked, I was like, damn, Lord, what the fuck did I do? Where did I fuck up at? That's the first thing you ask. I'm like, I must have did something to piss off the Lord, you know, but the spirit was like, nah, it's just part of the hell you got to catch. But even then, just the thought of examining yourself, these people don't examine themselves, man. And that's the point, because everybody has that victim narcissistic mentality, man. Very narcissistic. But it says here. Uh, behold, victory should be so good, cheap upon earth, that they should think themselves to be in good case. And even then, shall evils grow upon earth, sword, famine, and great confusion, man. Okay? And, hey, when these food shortages, I mean, these trucker shortages, these fuel shortages, when that goes into full effect, then you can forget about the food. Because it's going to be a famine based on that. Because these trucks, they're bringing the foods into these cities. And once they are out of fuel completely, how are you going to get your food delivered to the store? So that's going to cause a famine, okay? And things are going to be rationed out, and that's going to cause a chaotic environment. So, yeah, the Lord's getting ready to do some shit out here, brothers. But anyway, I'm going to end it here. All praises and glory and honor is due to you. How about you? How about you? With that, shalom and blah, blah, blah.